One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. What I find really fun about podcasting is the different intersections of worlds colliding together. (laughs) I am so excited for you to hear the conversation between myself and someone who has just such an incredible journey. And I just, I'm, I'm so thrilled for it. It was so much fun to talk to Nissa Brown, who is someone that is a content creator. She's a world traveler. She has so much insight into curriculum and creating programs and teaching. And I just loved this entire conversation that we have. So let me tell you a little bit about Nissa today. So she is someone who empowers entrepreneurs to design the best course in their industry by getting their big ideas out of their heads and into an online course. With over 20 years of experience, Nissa has coached educators and course creators on six continents that six continents, yes, 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 to share their expertise, creating courses that transform their students and their businesses. So without further ado, here is my conversation with Nissa. Welcome to the Profit Podcast, where we teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of podcasting, think of this show as the time-saving shortcut you've been looking for. So let's get right to it, shall we? All right, Profit Podcast listeners, I'm so excited for today's special guest. Welcome to the show, Nissa. So happy you're here. I am so honored to be here. I think the world of your work and I have been your student and learned so much and launched a podcast. So I am honored, honored, honored to be uh, as a part of your, your incredible podcast. So thank you for that. 
Yes, this is so awesome. Well, you are actually one of our international guests today. You are joining us from Amsterdam, which I think is so fun. I've never been to that part of the world. And so I'm living vicariously through you right now because I'm just like, oh my gosh, that sounds so amazing. But tell us a little bit about your backstory. Like you're obviously you're an American living overseas. And I just want to know how that happened and what it is that you're doing today. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Great question. So, um, I, gosh, where to start? Okay. So I moved overseas to teach at the international schools, um, in, 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 in on the international school circuit. And, um, I'm a career long educator. I've taught pre-K through grad school, um, over 20 years and, um, about, I don't know, 15 years or so into my career, the opportunity, I completely in U.S. public schools, U.S. state systems was where I'd worked. Um, the opportunity came up to jump overseas and go teach in India. And I had done some shorter term, like study abroad, uh, fellowship type stuff, like semester long stuff. But the opportunity was absolutely irresistible. And um, I've, you know, been a part of the yoga community for over 20 years. And I, I just could not resist the opportunity to jump and to go to India when the chance came up. So I was at the American Embassy School in Delhi, um, short stint back in the States. Then I've taught at a couple schools now in the Netherlands. And um, I'm able to stay here because I have launched my business as a Dutch business. And so there's actually uh, a visa that allows me to stay here, an agreement between the U.S. and the Dutch government. And so it's my business that allows me to live here, which is really a, a really wonderful perk I didn't expect to find. <laughs> That's so awesome. So, well, first of all, I want to say bless you. We were talking earlier about being an educator and, and everything. And I'm just like, y'all are angels on earth. I mean, I have three kids and I'm just, I'm so grateful for our teachers and educators. Aww. So thank you so much for what you do. <laughs> yes, absolutely. My pleasure. And it's being a teacher is always tough. Being a teacher right now is especially tough. So I want to give a shout out. I'm not in the classroom this year. I was last year. Shout out to all the educators out there who yes. are doing unbelievable work in the face of really difficult things. So I will acknowledge my colleagues as well, along with you. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, it's, I mean, it's your education background that has just given you kind of all the rocket fuel that you needed to do what you're doing today in your business. So before we dive into all the the ways that you can work with content creators and all the amazing things that you're doing, I wanna take a step back and really just kind of tell a little bit more about your journey of creating content that you eventually monetize with courses and different products that you offer. So tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah, so I was uh, a teacher for about 20 years. And for, I don't know, the last 12 or so of that um, was also teaching adults. So I was teaching children anywhere between pre-K through 11th grade, and then um, also ended up teaching in grad programs. And so I was teaching adults, I was doing workshops. So I've always been completely fascinated by how we learn, how I learn, how children learn, how adults learn. Because I feel like those of us who really want to show up and serve, and I know that's you, Crystal, and I know that's your audience, we want to serve. We want to show up. We want to make a difference in the way that is authentic to us, in a way that is our truest voice, in a way that is our, if you will, our meant to be contribution to this planet and to our global community, right? And so... I have always been fascinated by how could I do that in the way that served the most people, right? And in order to do that, as an educator, I needed to figure out how people learn, <laughs> yeah. um, starting with myself. It's always a good place to start with yourself, right? And so I really got fascinated by that. And, um, you know, there were some, I'm, I have a music background, so I'm a music teacher by trade. And wh honestly, one of the things that launched me into learning how adults learn is that us, oftentimes music teachers, arts teachers don't get the same professional development opportunities, say that math teachers do or science teachers do. And that's a whole other tangent I'm not going to go off on. But it was that inequity that actually launched me into writing a master's thesis on adult learning. And that was where I, you know, really took that step of thinking, okay, how, how can I best serve not just students, but adults. And what would that look like? And um, that led me to be at the state level uh, music education coordinator for the state of Minnesota. So I was like the department of ed person in music for five years. Um, and then I was teaching in grad programs. And so I've really just had 
a, a love, 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 love and fascination with how people learn. Um, and then I've always done workshops. I've always done mostly in person, which was kind of the normal thing right before two and a half years ago. So I would travel um, and, you know, do workshops across the states. And then we'd have national conferences and international conferences. And I would be able to serve teachers that way and be able to go present on student learning or adult learning. And what I realized was there was really kind of this hole um, in uh, a need for arts educators to have that really high quality professional development. And that's really what led me to step into uh, a consulting role, um, exclusively really teaching teachers. Uh, and then when the pandemic hit, all of a sudden it was like, well, if you want to show up and serve, you're going to do it online. And so all of a sudden now I've got all this education background, this curriculum design, this instructional design background, this, how is it that arts, uh, or how is it that adults learn and how is it that adults learn online now? Mm-hmm. And so that's really what what uh, launched me into launching uh, multiple courses <laughs> and helped me sort of transition into that world of courses. It had been actually on my mind and for about a year or so, but then it was time. When it was time for all of us, it was time for me as well. And so we did. <laughs> and that's really what what uh, what you know helped me bring all of the pieces together that I currently, Uh, I currently weave together for schools and then also for entrepreneurs who are writing courses. Okay. This is, this is so good. I love that, you know, first of all, you were just like, okay, we're going to do this. <laughs> like, you know, what choice, just, what choice do, you have? Yeah. Right. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's born out of necessity. We just, we just got to go. And yep. I, I love that this is something that you've really focused on because I bet there was so many people listening right now that are nodding their head. They're like, yeah, my kids are taking all online courses. I've taken online courses or continuing ed for their jobs or what they're doing for their communities. So I think that this is really, really timely and relevant right now, especially. Yeah. But I want to go back to um, your podcast. So mm. you started your podcast and how has creating content in that type of format, did any of that really prepare you to make that transition from doing these conferences and workshops and everything in person to more mm-hmm. online? Yeah, I think there were. there's lots of levels to that question. And I think it's such a good one. So one of the things that was almost eerie to me and uncomfortable was sitting in front of a microphone like I am now and like you are now, talking into to a certain extent thin air except that yeah. your face is on my screen right like it's it's this it's it's a kind of a, an odd feeling because there's nobody in person talking to you so uh, on one level it was sort of getting used to and comfortable with my own voice mm. and getting comfortable with the fact that yeah i really did have something to say it was the unique combination which i've told you all kinds of facets of it was that unique combination that came together that uniquely qualified me to say what I was saying. Did it qualify me to say absolutely everything in the world? No, but I was uniquely qualified to come at it the way I came at it because of the, all the pieces I could put together based on my own experience. And it was sort of owning my voice and owning that sense of, I don't know everything, but I do know this and I want to serve. I want to show up and serve. I want to do what I can in the midst of this, you know, everything that we're navigating. I want to do my part. And so there was a lot, there was discomfort with that, but there was also this piece of this is something I can do. And so it's something I'm going to figure out because I'm dedicated to being one of the bajillion people who are dedicated to being a part of this solution. Right. And so I think it was working through that because of that dedication of, no, I, I, I I really want to do this. I want to be a part of this as so many other people are that sort of helped me just work through that discomfort. And as you say, the more you do it, the easier it gets. <laughs> and I don't know. So that's, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's where my yes. mind went. <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. Well, I'm thinking about anybody that's listening, like they really honed in on that one piece where you're like, it's really eerie to be yes. in a room and like, just have a microphone and you're like, is, is, does everyone feel this way? So I think that you just gave everybody a gift and totally. acknowledging <laughs> y'all are not alone. Totally. It's weird. Can we just call it? It's weird yes. to, especially if you do, you know, any kind of solo 
recording and you're like, I'm literally just, you're not even on camera. You're, yep. You have a microphone in front of you and you see the waveform going across the screen and you're like, okay, I, I guess I'm talking now. Right, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then as soon as you, if you do like decide that you want to do um, like a, a, a course or something where you are not just doing audio, although audio podcast for a course is a fantastic idea. If you decide you layer that piece of video on, there's that adjustment period too. And I don't know anybody that that hasn't been true for. Do you? Like, I, I think that the only person I've ever met that said they had no issue turning on a camera, getting behind a microphone and just going at it, they had had years and years and years of, of a performance background. Uh, That's the only person that I've yeah. ever met that said, you know what? It wasn't that bad. But still, I think there was some awkwardness, but it didn't last. Like, it was like ripping off a Band-Aid for them, whereas yeah. most people that I talked to were like... No, this is really strange. And it took me like 10 episodes of of like, or just recording something and they hit delete. That's what I tell people to do. I'm like, Absolutely. record yourself and then throw it away. Don't even listen to it. Just throw it away. You got to just get it out of your system and make it happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but I want to kind of stay here for a second and talk about some of those insecurities mm. and that self-doubt that can really come up when you're just getting started on your content creation. Because I know that this is something that you actually help people that are trying to create their first product, their first course. And how can we actually use that to our advantage? I think this is one of the most important questions because if we don't start, we're stuck. <laughs> and I think, again, everyone I've talked with gets in their own way or in their own head to a certain extent. And that's not a criticism, right? I, humility is good. <laughs> Being humble is is good. Like these are these are good qualities to have in in balance with courage and dedication and just some fortitude, right? But sometimes, you know, those values swing one way or the other, and we can get sort of stuck in the, oh, what do I know? Or I don't know if I can do this. Uh, I don't know if, I, if I'm if i qualified enough to say this. And I think I know for myself, I'll just speak for myself, the people that I have genuinely learned the most from and who have accelerated my learning and my growth have been people I have resonated with as humans. Mm. And that piece of being who we are in a vulnerable enough way that people feel like they can open up, they learn better from us. I mean, we know that, I mean, if you just think about like the brain itself, when we get anxious, scared, threatened, part of our brain shuts down and we can't learn, right? So if we think that only the people who have 20, 25 years, people who can be kind of intimidating when you're starting, right? You've got to have 25 years of experience to be able to be really good at something or to be able to, you know, have the authority to be a teacher. Honestly, that's not always the best person for us because they're so far down the road, they can intimidate us and our brain will shut down. So this whole idea of showing up as a human, first of all, but also showing up with the unique constellation of things that make us us, make us actually the perfect teacher for our perfect clients. And I don't mean that anybody's perfect. I don't mean that definition of perfect. But showing up authentically as we are means that our students who are meant to learn from us can show up with authenticity and vulnerability as well. And I don't think anybody should ever underestimate their ability to do good and make a difference based on a credential, based on a certification, based on a degree. All those things are great. If you've got them, use them. Fantastic. Pursue them if you want to. But it's not just that that makes you uniquely qualified to serve the people that you're meant to serve. Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, 
inviting you to a special six episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. Yeah, I think that that was a gift <laughs> that you just gave someone. Someone needed Good. to hear that. Good. Because, because I do. I think that a lot of people come to me even just to start a podcast, not even to sell anything to anybody. They're just like, I don't know that I'm expert enough or I'm qualified mm -hmm. enough. And I'm like, do you have a microphone? Check. Do you have a voice? <laughs> Check. An internet connection. You're good to go. You know, like right. you're good to go. And I think that so many people hold themselves back. And I hear this time and time again that once someone actually starts their podcast and they start creating content, they say, I wish I would have been doing this years ago. Yes. I wish I would have started. Did you have kind of that? Did you have a similar experience whenever you first started putting content out there? Did you have like, oh man, I wish I could have been doing this? I know I did. <laughs> Um, I, I honestly started my podcast a couple of weeks before the world shut down in 2020, but I had been, but, and I didn't know that was coming. Like it wasn't, right. it wasn't a, Hey, this is coming. I should start. It just so happened to be that way. Like my first three episodes are like pedagogy curriculum design at a sort of like meta comprehensive level. And the next stuff jumps into surviving teaching during a pandemic, right? It's like, it was that shift. So I started, but looking back, I, I think, wow, well, I, I really could have probably, um, served more people. I really could have, um, helped more people had I started earlier. And that's kind of when you were talking, what came to my mind is like, if you're holding, if you're listening to this podcast and you're holding back starting your own podcast, think of the people that you aren't able to help in the meantime until you do start. And that's not to like, no guilt, no shame, we're all busy, right? But, and if that's the case and it's just not the time because you don't have the time and energy to dedicate, yeah. that's one thing. But if what you're telling yourself is your voice doesn't matter or you're not qualified, you're missing being, being able to help people until you start, right? I guess that's kind of the way I look at it. <laughs> yeah, I, and I think it's a great approach too, because you're right. I, I think that there are some people listening that it's not the time for you to get started. Right. I, I've had so many, um, for all of you new mamas or people about to give birth, please oh, yeah. do not come to me and say, okay, should I, I, I'm due in like two weeks. Should I start my podcast? I'm like, no, what are you? No, 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 no. Do nope. not. Other like, give priorities. Yourself, <laughs> yes, give yourself like, 12 months. I might even say give yourself six months. Like give yourself up to 12 months before you ever commit to going all in on something because you have other priorities right now. Right. But definitely those of you that are saying like, I just don't know that I'm it. I don't know that I have what it takes. You do. You Absolutely. do have what it takes. You just... You have to just get started, rip that Band-Aid off. And yep. I just, I love you sharing that you had different ideas. You had different plans for your podcast. Sure and you're did. like, oh wait, guys, <laughs> got to change it up a little bit. This yep. is, but, but you kept going. So that's awesome. I think that that story will really resonate with somebody that's listening right now. For Good. Sure. Wonderful. I hope so. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But I actually, I want to talk about the people that are in the audience that are thinking about monetizing their content, right? Mm -hmm. They're thinking about, okay, I've had a course on my list. Maybe it's on their vision board for 2022 or it's been yes. their New Year's resolution for like four years <laughs> and they haven't made it happen. Okay, y'all, I was so guilty of this before I ever launched my very first product. I was like, sure, I'm going to do this, but it has to be perfect. But okay, we could talk about overcoming perfectionism. This yeah. is another thing too. Yep, yeah, we can go there. But, sure. <laughs> but I, I want to ask you, um, because this comes up a lot in different spaces and I'd love to get your opinion on it. Sure. If someone was creating something that's paid for, could they reuse something that they've already put out there in other places, on a podcast? They've put it out on Instagram, maybe as like tech tutorials or different things. Like, how do you feel about the blending of free content versus what you put behind a paywall? What does that look like for you? Well, I'm a teacher and I have the heart of a teacher and we give, 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 and give. <laughs> and I know that's not unique to teachers, but it is true for me. And so this, this struggling with, um, 
being paid for something generally, I mean, that's its own conversation. We can, we can put that behind the whole, right after the perfectionism topic, we can cover that one. Um, but those of us who really want to give and want to be of service, sometimes it's really hard for us to take that step to say, yeah, I deserve to be paid for this. Like this, this, you know, and, and if, you know, if you, if you have a podcast, if you've ever put together a workshop, we know how many hours go into generating the content, putting together the slides and the visuals, you know, creating any, um, you know, tech, anything that goes with it, if it has to be recorded, you know, putting it into some portal so people can get to it somehow, right? There's so much work that goes into it, but sometimes we have a really difficult time saying, yeah, it's okay to be paid for that. Not just I deserve, like, let's start with, it's okay for me to be paid for that, (laughs) right? And so I think that that's a really important thing to look at too, is that a lot of times, um, and I really will get back to your question in just a second. I think we take for granted what we know, right? So I'm, I, I just think it's really important. People will say to me all the time, they'll come to me, and I can tell just by the first five minutes of our conversation, they have so much to offer, but they take for completely take for granted what they know. And so just overcoming that hurdle of you have something to offer, kind of like, yes, it's okay to start a podcast. You have something to say, but not only do you have something to say, you have enough of a something to say that somebody could pay you for it and 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 should even pay you for it. So the way that I look at it is I try to be generous, very generous with my free content. And um, you know, my <laughs> I've had so many people tell me my freebie is something that people should pay for. And or one of my freebies is something that people should pay for. It's a multi, 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 multi-page PDF for music teachers. And I really do want to be generous because I have the ability to do that. And I'm so grateful for that. And at the same time, I know that I can't do my best work with people unless we get in there and dig deep. The kind of transformation I want for people, if you want to design a mini course, you want to design a signature course, you want to design any, a workshop even, that takes steps that there isn't really room for in a podcast. Like I can't walk you through, I can't coach you. We need to have a conversation about that, right? I need to hear you. I need to be able to ask clarifying questions. I need to be able to scaffold some thinking for you. Like it could look like this or it could look like this. What's your vision? So I feel like the free content, to a certain extent, you can do outlines of things or you can do tips and you can do five strategies for, and that's all wonderful. But if you want to know what those strategies look like when they're applied to your content, we're going to have to dig a little deeper, right? And that needs to happen, not just in a 20 minute podcast, but we can take those same strategies along with a whole bunch of other things and really unpack them in a course, right? Those five strategies you give in a podcast, those could be put into five lessons in a course. And I can ask you some really good questions about how does this apply to you? What are you doing? What aren't you doing? What do you want to be doing? How does this apply to your business? What would it look like if you got dug deeper on this, right? We can go deeper in a course. You can get bigger transformation. You can help people more. You can help them move further in their dreams and their desires. Because if they aren't paying for something, they're signing up because they want to change for themselves, right? And I can't facilitate that change all in free free content. It's it doesn't work that way, right? So I, that's kind of how I see I see the depth and the um, magnitude of transformation that's possible in paid content when people get in there because they want to be there and they want to stick with it as related, um, but. The people who are meant to learn from you, learn from you. They come to you to learn that depth that you can offer them. Yeah, I think that's it's so true. And I also, I, I like to link the free content with like, that's the opportunity for people to say, yeah, I want Nissa to be my teacher. Mm. Like I want to learn from her. And right. like, she's proven to me time and time again, each week on the podcast or in her emails that she sends out, like in her freebie, that's so good. Like I want to throw my wallet at her and say, take my money. You know? <laughs> like That's where you get people to say that. Like, oh, it's just that trust factor right. that can really be built with free content. So I, uh, this is this is so good. And I actually hmm. want to go back to, you know, you were talking about someone's like thinking about creating a mini course or something that's it's like mm-hmm. kind of baby stepping in to yeah. monetizing their content or creating um, creating courses. Are there any like specific mistakes that you see time and time again when people are really just getting into the monetization of content? Is there anything that like pops up in your mind? Yeah, I guess I would approach it first from kind of like a design perspective, mm-hmm. which 
is really important because what you're selling people is results, right? You're selling them transformation. You're selling them some kind of an outcome, whether that outcome is to do better on a standardized test that they're studying for, or that outcome is learning how to, you know, cook cuisine from a specific part of the world, right? It, it doesn't matter. You're selling them some kind of, of an outcome. They want to change in their lives, right? They're saying to you, they're opening themselves to you and saying, I want I want transformation. I want, I want some kind of change. I want something better in my life than I have now um, or a, 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 an evolution in my life based on what I have now. And that's a real honor. Like if somebody comes to you and says, I'm going to trust you enough to be my teacher in something, no matter how big or how small, I never take that for granted. Like trust is earned and that's the way it should be, right? So I think about when, when you know, we think about monetizing content, I think about my own integrity demands of me that I can deliver what I'm promising. And before I monetize anything, I need to figure out what I can really deliver people, right? What is it that I can really offer them? What results can I really um, facilitate for people? And so I think, you know, before I think about how much I would charge for anything, I would start to think about what is, so if you're at the beginning of your design, you know, you're designing some kind of a um, paid content, whether it's a workshop of some kind or it's a mini course, I would think what's, for, for my audience, what's that next smallish step that would help them get some of the results that they want along their journey, right? So if you're designing your first piece of content, what would be the goal by the time they get to the end of that workshop or that mini course. And one of the mistakes I would say that people make is they think about what they want to teach. They don't mm. think about what results the student will get. And the danger of that is that we teach all kinds of really, really cool things. But by the end of the product, by the end of the workshop or the mini course, they don't walk away with that's like the kind of walk away with like lots of different Lego pieces in their hand, but they yeah. don't know how to put them together to make a really cool castle. <laughs> Back to a kid analogy. I love but, it. I love it. But honestly, <laughs> like we need to figure out what's the castle. Like what can you build? What can people actually do and apply at the end of what's it? How will their life be different? Right? Not just a series of really cool things that you can teach them, but what's the outcome you really want? And, and this idea of, you know, it's kind of like the couch to 5k app, you know, like if you've ever, if yes. anybody's ever done that, like, you know, your, your butt's sitting on the couch and you want to run a 5k. Well, you know what the end goal is. The end goal is run a 5k in like six weeks or whatever it is. And then they plan backwards from there, each workout to help you get there. So it's that same idea. It's that we just, we decide what is the transformation that we can promise with our integrity fully intact. What can we promise? And is it a 45 minute workshop? Is it a three module course? It doesn't matter. It, you're just taking that next step. What's that next step? That's all. And then once you know what that goal is, what the results that you can deliver, no matter how big or how small, you start to plan backwards your modules or your lessons or your activities within a workshop or a webinar or something to sort of step people through that. So by the time they're done, they're like, oh, you just taught me how to put things together, I never knew how to put together. And now I can X, Y, Z, whereas at the start of the call or the start of the course, I couldn't, right? Yeah. People will this pay is... for that and they and they should pay for that, right? That is wonderful service. That is wonderful transformation. Yeah, oh, this is so good. And I love how you, um, I love the analogy of the, the couch to 5K because I think, <laughs> like, I was like, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Been there. Oh, I do too. <laughs> Multiple there. times, let's be honest. Yes, exactly. <laughs> multiple times, multiple times. And then usually it's like, it's like couch to a mile, not even a 5k. I'm like, can I just get, can I just run without stopping and dying? That's yeah. really all I need. Mm -hmm. Like that's happened multiple times. Mm -hmm. multiple I'm times with you hundred percent, but it's so true. It's, it's getting that clarity. And I think that you, uh, you really hit the nail on the head with saying, it's not about what you want to say, because if you're, let's be honest, if you're interested in podcasting, you're listening to the show, you probably like to talk. You probably like to share all the amazing things that you know, which is fantastic. And I think it's one of the reasons why people should podcast. Mm -hmm. But also, um, I think that it is a big mistake that people think, oh, I can just shove all of the things that I know into a program because that's what people want. But mm. what Nissa is saying, you've got to start with those results and work backwards because yeah. that's how you're going to get people 
results. Yes. So, so good. But I actually, I want to talk real fast because we've really been concentrating kind of on the beginner, the beginner, the beginner, Mm, but yeah. If somebody's listening right now and they're like, okay, well, I've already created, maybe they made that mistake. They're like, oh, this is why people aren't getting the results with my course or my offer because I I did focus, uh, like I put too much information or maybe they have a high refund rate. What kind of advice would you give to them if they're trying to fix a product that either isn't selling well or people aren't getting those types of results? Yeah. Such a good question. There's so many nuances to that, (laughs) but I break it down into four to five steps of things that are kind of, I would say, non-negotiable in terms of how you have to think about designing learning, whether it's in a workshop or it's a a short course or a long course, or even a coaching program or a membership. I mean, we're talking about courses today because they're really wonderful entry points, right, for folks. Um, But really, this whole idea of designing learning can happen over any period of time in any context, right? Any business model. So if you're more experienced and you have a laid out customer journey from freebie to membership, like the same thing applies. It doesn't matter, right, with six products in between. Um, So that idea of a course goal, that has to be the first thing, right? But then um, thinking about, so I'm I'm speaking now to folks who who already have a product who are looking to kind of tweak, right? So this is, you know, if if you're a beginner, this is this is also for you, but specifically for folks who wanna um who who wanna think a little bit with more layers, maybe. Um, we need to figure out where folks are starting. Because we can easily take for granted, okay, I want st- I want my students or my clients to get here by the end of this product. But if we don't know where they start, it's entirely possible we could start beyond where our students are and we've already lost them. Hello, I wouldn't continue in a course where I felt stupid from the first day, right? Like, mm, talk yeah. about people not completing. Or if we start too far back for we could end up boring our students and who wants to be, who wants to do modules of things I already know, right? So this whole idea of figuring out where your students are at and even, and now I'm going, I will, I promise I won't go too many layers deep, even providing a welcome module that differentiates. That means if you, here's where we're going to start. Welcome to my course. Here's where we're going to start. If you need more information on X, here's a link. Go. If you need more information on X, here's a podcast I talked about. Go. So you can kind of even and scaffold and and kind of catch people up, make sure that you've got you've got a safety net for folks, right? But we have to know where they start. And there isn't one point, but we have to kind of keep in mind a range. If our customer journey is set up really well, and again, now I'm talking to folks who have multiple products, one the end of one product makes saying yes to our next product an absolute no-brainer because we've prepared them perfectly for it. Right. And this is where our content design is so important, because if we're thinking in chunks, we know that by the time you get to the end of my freebie, what you really want to know is what's in my masterclass, my low ticket masterclass. And by the time you get to the end of my masterclass, what you really want to know is what's in my mini course. And by the time you get to the end of my mini course, you're actually prepared to jump into my signature course, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So starting with the course goal, then thinking about the starting line, like where is it that people are starting and how do we make sure we don't lose people right from the beginning? Because we, we all know course completion rates oftentimes not real good. Um, and then once we know where we want students to get our students or clients to get to and where they're starting, then we can do those kind of like those couch to 5K runs, how they sort of scaffold in between, right? They say, okay, well, this chunk of learning makes sense. This chunk of learning makes sense. This chunk of learning. We can start to chunk that together. What is it that's, that we want our students to know? Like what's the new information they might not know? Um, what are new frameworks, models, strategies? What do we want them to be able to do with those things? So what you know what 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 are you going to do with this new information i'm giving you and how do you apply it to your own life because if you don't know how it applies to you then mm-hmm. they're not going to take it with them right so there's kind of like three levels of those learning chunks and then this is this is one of the things i think the course industry i'm like smirking um because this is one <laughs> of the things that if i could like wave a magic wand i would change because i think one of the reasons our courses aren't as effective as they could be is that we don't really know if we've gotten students transformation. We don't know how Mm. to check for learning. We don't know how to, teachers have all kinds of jargon, I'll try to spare you on this, because we have to, we have to know how our students are doing, right? 
So if we promised a certain transformation, we need to check in with students and say, and it might not be a conversation, we could prepare something that they return to us, right? Like, let's say I give you a template and I know that if you can fill this out with, you know, such and such and such and such criteria that you have completed my course promise. We don't have those assessments or those ways to check in to see, did you get what I promised you out of this? Because if I don't know that, I can't be a better teacher. And I'm always about being a better teacher, right? I always want to be better. I don't ever think I'm good enough, which is a blessing and a curse, right? But that's a huge piece of it too. So I guess if I were going to chunk it into four, I would say course goal, where are your students starting? What are the learning chunks in between? And how in the world are you going to know if they got what you promised them? And there's strategies. Right, right. There's <laughs> strategies for all of those, right? And we could go details and layers and all those things, and I won't. Um, but anyways, yes, those those would be my four four like best advice steps. Seriously, though, no, that was a mic drop because that was a master class. Like I, I was smiling the whole time she was talking because I was like, this is so good. This is so, so good. Like I, I feel like I just kind of transported myself back to right before I started working on my very first product, which, you know, Nissa, as she said earlier, like she's one of my students. Yes! She went through Profit Podcasting. I did. And I think back to the first very, very first version of Mm -hmm. the baby course that I created. And it was, you know, it was a, it was the first one (laughs) I've ever done. And I'm thinking back and I'm like, I wish I would have known all of these things Mm. because I think one, one of my biggest mistakes was just shoving it all in there. Everything that I know, I'm going to put it all in there. And I wasn't clear about, um, not only the transformation, because the, what I was promising was, hey, you'll know how to create a podcast, but it wasn't, you'll know how to actually do this and feel more confident and feel like you have like marketing mm. strategies. And, and like, these are the layers that I've added over time. Yeah. But I want to go back to one important piece. And that was, I got started, y'all. And this is yep. something that if you get started and then people like Nissa, like this is what she does. Like this is her specialty in helping you tweak it, make it better and make it to where people are a lot more excited about completing your course, not just yes. buying it. I think so many people focus yep. on buying and sales and revenue and income and all these money things. Whereas getting people to the finish line is just as important because yep. that is how you can really make transformation. Sorry, I felt like yep. I got up on a soapbox there for a second. But no, it's I so com- important. I completely agree. And thinking about it's it, again, if I had to say, you know, I, I wish the course industry was talking about some things differently. One of them is yeah. how do we know if students actually got a transformation? Because most people don't check that, don't know how to check it. Right? There's there's that piece, um, but then also um, the, how to keep students engaged, right? It's a whole other conversation. I won't go down the rabbit hole, but there are strategies for that, right? There are things that we can build into our courses preemptively, even from the beginning that are going to make folks more likely to stay engaged. And then throughout the course, things that we can do that also will inspire folks not to want to miss out on things because they haven't done things, right? Like, I don't mean to make it like an exclusive, but like, just it's that sort of motivation to help people keep going because, hey, everybody listening to this podcast could be doing 16 other things and may be doing 16 other things at the same time, right? We have lots of really worthwhile things that we do in our lives. And so if we want to keep people engaged, there has to be an intentionality, not that it's an accident that some people finish the course, (laughs) Yes, yes. This is so good. Oh, I, I so appreciate you. I mean, I, I was thinking about some other things. I'm like, oh, I could change this in my course and do this. And we're going to have a whole conversation whenever we're done here. Because Fantastic. So good. So good. <laughs> wonderful. But I, I want to jump into our next segment, which is our rapid fire question. Oh, so are goodness. Are you ready? I, well, I think so. Am I ready? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to see. Okay. We're going to see. Here we go. <laughs> but my first one is, what piece of advice would you give to a brand new podcaster? Mm. I think I would say look inside and feel feel what you are called to say. Like really look inside and and decide who you know who, who is it that you are 
And what is it that you can uniquely offer? And honor that. Don't walk away from that. That's a gift that only you have. No, nobody, nobody can share the unique constellation of things that you can. And please, please, please don't rob the world of that. We need that. Oh, that was so good. That's such great advice. My next question is a two-part question, okay. and that is, what is the dream podcast you would love to be on, and who is a dream podcast guest for you to interview? Oh, my goodness. This list is long. <laughs> um, well, I have to say, I'm a, well, as are you, we're both huge Amy Porterfield fans, so for me to be on her podcast would be just such an honor because I respect her so incredibly much. Um, and in terms of somebody I would love to have on my podcast, oh gosh, I, I mean, the answer might be the same. Like, I, I don't know. I might love to, I might love to have Amy on my podcast as well. I don't, you know, maybe that'll happen. I'm not going to close any door. I almost just like mindset blocked myself, but I'm not going to yeah. do that. <laughs> I don't know. I might be all about Amy today. That might be what it, that might be where I go. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a great answer. Great answer. And my last question is, do you consider yourself a perfectionist? I am so much less debilitated by it than I used to be. <laughs> and it's an ongoing process for me. So yeah. yes and. I'll leave that as a yes and answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. I have a feeling there's people in the audience that are like, yep, yeah, that's me too. That's me too. Yeah, yeah. Like what she said, yes and, yes. Yes and. <laughs> well, Nissa, this has been so much fun. I so appreciate you dropping just so much incredibly valuable information about, you know, really taking the world of creating content and feeling confident about it and really just taking that information and providing it to students, members of your community in a way that can elevate them and really just help people get bigger transformation. So thank you so much. Can you share with everyone where they can connect with you and learn more about what you do? Yes, absolutely. Before I do that, though, I want to say thank you to you. You are the reason that my podcast got out there in any kind of timely fashion. It would have taken me probably years longer without you. Um, and I am so grateful for that. And I also want to say I was actually one of your scholarship recipients. I don't know if you remember that, but your generosity oh, yes. around service um, is one of my inspirations as well. So thank you for all the people that you've helped. Um, and specifically, thank you for helping me. I really appreciate that. You're um, so welcome. Yeah, thanks. Um, so in terms of contacting me, um, my, uh, curriculum design work is through bespoke curriculum. So it's uh, bespoke curriculum.com and, um, there is information and a freebie there and all kinds of stuff. If you want, uh, you know, want to be in touch or if you want to learn more, uh, feel free to check it out. And I am always open to questions, comments, you know, connections, whatever you've got. Don't please, please, please don't hesitate to be in touch. Perfect. And can you share with everyone the name of your podcast as well? Yes. So um, my podcast is through my specifically arts consulting uh, wing of my, so I kind of have two wings of my business. I've got the arts consulting piece and then I have the entrepreneur consulting piece. And so the podcast at this point is uh, Music Ed Forward is the name of my business and it's also the name of the podcast. So it's the Music Ed Forward podcast. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much again for being here today and sharing with us all of your wisdom. This was so much fun. And I know that people listening got a lot of really good stuff out of today's conversation. It was awesome to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation, Crystal. What a fun conversation, right? Oh my gosh. It was so good. I loved hearing all the different experience that Nissa has because I think that when we're in the online business space, we think that, well, you know, you have to have this certain path or the certain journey. But what I have found time and time again is really looking at my own skills and abilities to what I'm already good at, what I already feel comfortable doing. And then I ask myself, how can I apply that to what I'm doing today? 
So, I mean, Nissa, with all her education and speaking at all these conferences and being able to educate and teach other people, she brings so much to the table that I think is really missing in the online space. So I hope that you go check out everything that she has to offer. We're going to have everything linked in the show notes. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash episode 329 to learn more about all the amazing things that Nissa is doing for the online creator. And I hope that you go check her out. So again, the show notes are crystalprofit.com forward slash episode 329. But that's all I have for you today. So if this is your first time tuning in, make sure that you hit that subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening to this podcast. And I would love it if you would take a screenshot wherever you're listening to this and tag myself, tag Nissa on Instagram and let us know what you thought about today's episode. But that's all I have for you today. So as always, remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners. Thanks for sticking around to a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you. And I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.